Hello, my favorite subs. Today, I'll be reading to you from Le Cordon Bleu, the complete home collection cookbook. Let's start with the hors d'oeuvre. Mini blinis with caviar brightly covered and extremely appetizing. These small pancakes topped with sour cream and caviar or roe are bound to disappear very quickly. Preparation time is about 45 minutes with 30 minutes of resting time. Total cooking time is 35 minutes and this should make 40 to 45. Ingredients are one quarter ounce of fresh yeast or half an ounce of active dry yeast, two thirds of a cup of lukewarm milk, two teaspoons of sugar, half a cup of all purpose flour, half a cup of buckwheat flour, two eggs separated, three tablespoons of butter melted but cooled, Sour cream to garnish. Caviar or lump fish roe to garnish. Sprigs of fresh dill or chervil to garnish. Step one, dissolve the yeast in the lukewarm milk, then mix in the sugar, flours, egg yolks, and a large pinch of salt. Cover and allow to rest for 30 minutes in a warm place. After resting, the batter should be foamy and thick. Mix in the melted butter. Step 2. Beat the egg whites with a pinch of salt until soft peaks form. Gently fold into the batter. Step 3. Over medium heat, melt a little butter in a nonstick skillet. Using a small spoon, place dollops of the batter in the pan, trying to make them as uniform as possible, and being careful not to crowd the pan. Once the batter begins to set around the edges and the surface is bubbly, carefully flip the blinis over. Cook for another two to three minutes, or until brown. Transfer to a wire rack to cool down. You can overlap them, but do not stack. Repeat until all the batter has been used. Step four. If necessary, use a small round cutter to trim the blinis to the same size. Arrange on a serving platter. Place a spoonful of sour cream in the center of each and top with caviar or roe. Finish with a sprig of dill or chervil. Chef's tips. If you have any fresh yeast left over, it can be stored in the refrigerator lightly wrapped in wax paper for up to two weeks. Other types of caviar appropriate for this recipe include salmon or red caviar. Roquefort in Belgian endive leaves. The butter used in this recipe helps to soften both the texture and the distinctive salty taste of the roquefort a blue vein sheep's milk cheese from southern France. Preparation time is 20 minutes, and total cooking time is none, and this recipe should make 40 to 45. Ingredients are 8 ounces of roquefort or other strong blue cheese, half a cup of salted butter at room temperature, one tablespoon of port 
or Madeira, four heads of Belgian Odive, two tablespoons of chopped walnuts, sprigs of fresh parsley to garnish. Place the cheese, butter, and port in a food processor and process until smooth. Season to taste with freshly ground black pepper and more port if desired. Transfer to a bowl and set aside. 2. Remove any damaged outer leaves from the ensive and discard. Cut about a quarter inch from the bottom and carefully remove all the loose leaves. Repeat until all the leaves are loose. Step 3. Put the cheese mixture in a pastry bag fitted with a medium star tip and pipe a small rosette of cheese at the bottom of each endive leaf. Sprinkle each rosette with some chopped walnuts, then arrange the endive leaves on a round platter with the tips of the leaves pointing outward like the petals of a flower. Form the parsley into a small bouquet and place it in the center. Serve immediately. Chef's tip. The cheese filling may be prepared ahead of time and stored, covered with plastic wrap in the refrigerator. But once the enzyme is cut, it tends to discolor. So prepare the leaves just before serving. Bruschetta with prosciutto and gorgonzola. Italians are great bread eaters. Bruschetta are thin slices of bread, broiled and rubbed with a clove of cut garlic, the original garlic bread. Preparation time is 10 minutes. Total cooking time is 5 minutes. And this recipe makes 8. Ingredients. One loaf of Italian bread. Two cloves of garlic, halved. A quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. Eight sun-dried tomatoes in olive oil. Six ounces of gorgonzola cheese. And four slices of prosciutto, cut in half. Step 1. To prepare the bruschetta, cut the bread into thin slices and broil or toast to golden brown. Rub one side of each bruschetta with the cut surface of the garlic. Drizzle with olive oil and sprinkle with salt and freshly ground black pepper. 2. Drain the sun-dried tomatoes. Scrape off any seeds and cut into thin strips. Press or spread the cheese onto the bruschetta. Lay the prosciutto on top and garnish with strips of tomato. Season with a few grindings of freshly ground black pepper and serve. Chef's tips. If gorgonzola is too strong for your taste, use a creamier, milder cheese like dolce latte instead. As a variation, marinate diced fresh tomatoes, garlic, and chopped fresh basil leaves in enough balsamic vinegar to moisten well. Drain the excess juice and place a spoonful on top of the warm slice of bruschetta. Onion Tartlets These delectable golden onion tartlets must be served warm. The onion filling can be replaced with a mushroom filling, as described in the chef's tip below. If short of time, you could use sheaths of frozen puff pastry. Preparation time, 
45 minutes and 35 minutes of chilling. Total cooking time is 45 minutes, and this recipe should make 24. Ingredients for the pastry, 1 and 2 3rd cups of all-purpose flour, a quarter teaspoon of salt, 3 tablespoons of unsalted butter, cut into pieces and chilled, two egg yolks, and four to five tablespoons of water. For the onion filling, two tablespoons of unsalted butter, two onions finely chopped, one small bay leaf, two sprigs of fresh thyme, two-thirds of a cup of whipping cream, four eggs and four egg yolks, and a pinch of ground nutmeg. Step 1. Grease 24 individual mini tartlet pans or 24 mini muffin cups. Step 2. To make the pastry, Sift the flour and salt into a large bowl. Using your fingertips, rub the butter into the flour until the mixture resembles fine bread crumbs. Make a well in the center and add the egg yolks and water. Work the mixture together with a flexible bladed knife until it forms a rough ball. Turn out onto a lightly floured surface. Form into a ball and cover with plastic wrap. Chill in the refrigerator for 20 minutes. Step 3. To make the onion filling, melt the butter in a skillet over medium heat. Add the onions, bay leaf, and thyme with a pinch of salt. Cover and cook slowly for 15 minutes, then remove the lid and cook for 15 minutes, or until the onions are dark golden. Remove the bay leaf and thyme and allow to cool. Roll out the dough to a thickness of one eighth of an inch, then refrigerate for five minutes. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Remove the dough from the refrigerator and using a biscuit cutter slightly larger than the tartlet pans, cut out 24 rounds of pastry. Place the rounds in the pan, pressing down on the bottom so the dough extends slightly above the tops of the pans. Place in the refrigerator to chill for 10 minutes. Step 5. Whisk together the cream, eggs, egg yolks, nutmeg, and salt and pepper. Step 6. Divide the onion filling among the tartlet shells, then cover with the egg mixture. Bake for 12 to 15 minutes or until the tops of the tartlets are lightly browned. Remove the tartlets from the pans while they're still warm and serve them immediately. Chef's tip. If you want to replace the onion with a mushroom filling, melt two tablespoons of butter in a saucepan over medium heat. Add three finely chopped shallots and cook for three minutes. Toss two and a half cups of finely chopped mushrooms in one tablespoon of lemon juice. Add to the shallots and cook for another ten minutes or until dry. Set the filling aside to cool. Chicken liver pâté. This simply made pâté dip 
pictured top right has lots of flavor. If you want a stronger taste, try making it with duck livers. Preparation time, 15 minutes and 15 minutes cooling. Total cooking time is 10 minutes and serves four as an appetizer. Ingredients. Half a cup of unsalted butter at room temperature. Two shallots finely chopped. Two cloves of garlic finely chopped. Eight ounces of chicken livers trimmed. A sprig of fresh thyme. Bay leaf. A large pinch each of ground nutmeg, cloves, and cinnamon. One tablespoon of brandy or port, and two tablespoons of whipping cream or crème fraîche. Step 1. Place two tablespoons of butter in a skillet and add the shallots and garlic. Cook over a gentle heat until they soften and turn transparent. 2. Over medium heat. Add the livers, thyme, bay leaf, spices, and some salt and pepper to the shallot mixture. Fry for three minutes. The livers should be barely pink in the center. Set aside to cool for 15 minutes. Step 3. Remove the thyme and bay leaf from the mixture and process in a food processor until smooth. Then push through a sieve if you prefer an even, smoother texture. Beat in the remaining butter with a wooden spoon, then add the brandy or port. Carefully fold in the cream or crème fraîche and season to taste with salt and freshly ground pepper. Spoon the pâté into a serving bowl and serve with slices of Melba toast or toasted bread fingers. Chef's tip. You can prepare the pâté in advance and refrigerate for up to three days. You might find it too firm to be eaten as a dip straight from the refrigerator. The flavor and texture is better if it is allowed to soften for 30 minutes at room temperature before serving. Salmon rillette. This modern version of the classic French meat rillette, similar to pâté, uses both fresh and smoked salmon, pictured bottom right. Preparation time is 10 minutes and one hour of chilling. Total cooking time is 10 minutes and serves four as an appetizer. Ingredients. Four ounces of salmon filet, skin and bones removed. Two ounces of smoked salmon slices, finely chopped. One third of a cup of unsalted butter at room temperature. A quarter cup of plain yogurt. One teaspoon of lemon juice. Two tablespoons of chopped fresh chives. Step 1. Steam the fresh salmon for about 10 minutes or until cooked through. Cool on a clean kitchen towel or several pieces of paper towel. Step 2. Using a whisk or fork, mix the smoked salmon with the butter until as smooth as possible. Add the yogurt, lemon juice, and chives. Mix until well combined. Season to taste and set aside. 3. Gently crush the fresh salmon to make large flakes and add to the smoked salmon mixture. Mix until completely incorporated. 
Transfer to a small serving bowl or terrine and refrigerate for one hour or until set. Serve with Melba toast or French bread. Chef's tip. You can also make a mackerel rillette by replacing the fresh salmon with four ounces of fresh mackerel filet, skin and bones removed. Replace the smoked salmon with the same quantity of smoked mackerel and substitute lime juice for the lemon juice. Smoked Trout Pâté A stylish but easy to make pâté with a combination of fresh and smoked trout. For a variation, you could use smoked and fresh salmon or mackerel. Preparation time, 30 minutes, and cooling, and one hour of refrigerating. Total cook time is five minutes, and this recipe should serve six. Ingredients, one tablespoon of white wine vinegar, one bay leaf, four white peppercorns, a quarter pound of fresh trout filet, skin on, three quarter pound of smoked trout filet, skin removed, a quarter cup of cream cheese, a half cup of unsalted butter, softened, one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice, and four sprigs of fresh parsley, chervil, or dill to garnish. Step 1. Put the wine vinegar, bay leaf, white peppercorn, and half cup of water in a shallow saucepan, and bring slowly to a simmer. Put the fresh trout filet skin side down in this poaching liquid. Cover and gently cook the trout for 3 to 4 minutes, or until cooked through. Allow to cool in the liquid. Using a fish turner or spatula, transfer the trout carefully onto a plate and remove and discard the skin and any bones. Put the fresh trout and smoked trout filet in a food processor and process until they form a smooth puree. Add the cream cheese, butter, lemon juice, and some salt and black pepper and process until all the ingredients are thoroughly combined. Divide the pâté among six one-cup ramekins, three inches in diameter, and place them in the refrigerator for one hour. To serve, garnish with a parsley, chervil, or dill sprig, and accompany with Melba toast. Chef's tip This makes an excellent cocktail dip if served soft at cool room temperature. Alternatively, put the mixture into a pastry bag and pipe it onto small rounds of toast as a canopy. Garnish with a dill or chervil sprig. Crudité a colorful selection of crunchy, fresh vegetables served with a choice of dipping sauces is an ideal summer lunch or light appetizer. Preparation time is 35 minutes and one hour of chilling. Total cooking time is none, and this should serve 8 to 10. Ingredients for the sour cream dip. One cup of sour cream two tablespoons of mayonnaise, a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese, one teaspoon of lime or lemon juice, half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, one teaspoon of prepared horseradish, half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, and a quarter teaspoon of celery salt. In addition, one English cucumber, 
two stalks of celery, one red bell pepper, one yellow bell pepper, one small head of broccoli, twelve fresh or thirteen ounces of canned baby corn, one cup of snow peas, twelve baby carrots, and twenty cherry tomatoes. For the herb tip, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, one third of a cup of red wine vinegar, one cup of olive oil, and a half tablespoon each of chopped fresh chives, basil, parsley, and tarragon. Step 1. To prepare the sour cream dip, combine all the ingredients in a bowl and mix well. Chill for at least one hour before serving. Step 2. With a fork, scrape down the length of the cucumber to create a ridged pattern, then cut into quarter-inch slices. Cut the celery and peppers into two to three inch long sticks. Blanch the broccoli, corn, snow peas, and carrots in boiling water for one minute. Drain and refresh in cold water and drain again. Cut off and discard the broccoli stem. Cut the broccoli florets into bite-sized pieces. Arrange all the vegetables on a serving platter. Cover with damp paper towels, wrap in plastic wrap, and refrigerate until ready to serve. Step 3. To prepare the herb dip, place the mustard in a bowl and whisk in the vinegar. Gradually whisk in the oil before adding the herbs then season with salt and freshly ground black pepper. Serve the vegetables with dips on the side. Eggplant Caviar The name of this dish comes from the rather grainy appearance of the eggplant Delicious served with crisp Melba toast or warmed pita bread. Preparation time is 10 minutes and 1 hour of refrigeration. Total cooking time is 30 minutes. And this serves 6. Ingredients 1 and a half pound of eggplant. 1 third of a cup of chopped pitted black olives one clove of garlic, crushed, one third of a cup of finely chopped fresh chives, two thirds of a cup of olive oil, plus extra for brushing, and half a teaspoon of sweet paprika. Step 1. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Cut the eggplant in half lengthwise. Brush the cut sides with a little olive oil and sprinkle with salt and pepper. Place the halves cut side down in a baking dish or roasting pan. Step 2. Bake for 25 to 30 minutes or until the flesh is very soft. Drain the eggplant to remove any liquid. Scrape out the flesh with a spoon Chop the flesh and put in a bowl. Step 3. Add the black olives, garlic, and half the chives. Mix everything together using a fork, pressing the eggplant flesh against the sides of the bowl to break it down. Add the olive oil very slowly, stirring it into the mixture with the fork. Add the paprika and season to taste with salt and pepper. Refrigerate for one hour. Step 4. 
spoon into a chilled bowl. Sprinkle the top with remaining chives and serve with Melba toast. Chef's tip. For a particularly special presentation, use two spoons to shape the mixture into small oval cannelle and arrange on individual plates. Sprinkle with chopped chives. Shrimp gougère. Traditionally, a gougère is a round or ring-shaped cheese pastry. This variation uses plain cream puff pastry to make small puffs that are filled with a cold shrimp and mayonnaise mixture. Preparation time is 40 minutes. Total cooking time is 25 minutes. And this recipe should make about 20. Ingredients for the cream puff pastry is two-thirds of a cup of all-purpose flour, a half cup of water, three tablespoons of unsalted butter cut into small pieces, two eggs lightly beaten, and a pinch of ground nutmeg. Additionally, take one beaten egg for glazing. Eight ounces of cooked shrimp, shells removed. Sea chef's tip. A half cup of mayonnaise. And one tablespoon of finely chopped fresh chives. Step one. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and lightly butter two baking sheets. Step two. Make the pastry following the method in the chef's techniques on page 545 and adding the pinch of nutmeg to the pan with the butter. Step 3. Spoon the pastry into a pastry bag, fitted with a small plain tip. Pipe out small balls of dough the size of walnuts onto the prepared baking sheets, leaving a space of one and a quarter inches between each ball. Lightly brush the top of each ball with the beaten egg, being careful not to let any excess egg drip down onto the baking sheets, as this may prevent the balls from rising evenly. Bake in the oven for 30 minutes, or until the balls have puffed up and are golden brown. Remove from the oven and transfer to a wire rack to cool. Step 4. Coarsely chop the shrimp and place into a bowl, then add the mayonnaise and chopped chives and mix together. Season to taste with salt and freshly ground black pepper. Refrigerate the shrimp mixture until ready to use. Step 5. Once cooled, cut the pastry balls in half and remove any soft dough from inside them. Fill each ball with a small spoonful of the shrimp mixture. Prepare the tops, arrange on the platter, and serve. Chef's tip. If you are purchasing unshelled shrimp, you will need to buy about one and a quarter pound. Blue cheese and tomato canapé. Serve warm while the cheese is still melting, and these canapé, pictured far left, will disappear in an instant. Preparation time is about 15 minutes, and total cooking time is 20 minutes. And this recipe should make 60. Ingredients. 15 thin slices of day-old white or wheat bread, 2 and a half tablespoons of tomato paste, 6 and a half ounces of firm blue cheese, such as Stilton, crumbled, 1 and a half tablespoons of chopped fresh basil or oregano. 
Step 1. Preheat the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Using a one and a half inch biscuit cutter, cut out four rounds from each slice of bread, discarding the trimmings. Place the rounds on two baking sheets and bake for 15 minutes, turning them halfway through cooking. Step two, spread the rounds with the tomato paste and put them back on the baking sheets. Cover each one with blue cheese and sprinkle with half the basil or oregano. Return them to the oven for two minutes or until the cheese just starts to melt, but is not so liquid that it runs off the canapé. Season with black pepper, sprinkle with the remaining herbs, and serve immediately. Chef's tip. For a variation, other blue cheeses, such as Roquefort, can be used, but this will give a much stronger salty taste. To prepare ahead of time, cool the bread rounds after baking. Just before serving, spread with the tomato paste and top with cheese and herbs. Either bake in the oven or under a preheated broiler at the highest setting to melt the cheese and heat the canapé through. Beef and Horseradish Canapé A bite-sized classic combination of roast beef and horseradish sauce, pictured left. Preparation time is 15 minutes, and total cooking time is 5 minutes. This recipe should make around 32 Ingredients 8 thin slices of day-old white or wheat bread 5 ounces of rare roast beef, finely chopped 2 tablespoons of fresh horseradish, finely grated or 2 teaspoons of prepared horseradish 4 tablespoons of whipping cream, lightly whipped or sour cream sprigs of fresh chervil to garnish. Step 1. Preheat the broiler. Using a one and a half inch biscuit cutter, cut out four rounds from each slice of bread and discard the trimmings. Toast the circles on each side under the broiler and remove to a cooling rack. Step 2. Place the chopped beef in a bowl and mix in the horseradish and the cream. Season with salt and black pepper, bearing in mind how hot the horseradish is. Step 3. Using a teaspoon, mound the beef mixture neatly onto the cool rounds of bread and garnish with a chervil sprig. Chef's tip. For a variation, use the same ingredients but do not chop the beef. Mix the horseradish, lightly whipped cream, and salt and black pepper in a bowl. Pipe or spoon onto the toast, then place thinly sliced rounds of beef on top. Dust half the canapé with paprika and place thin slices of gherkin on the other half. Spinach and feta packages. These delicious small packages resembling beggar's purses, have a lovely crisp exterior and a soft, creamy center. Preparation time is about 30 minutes and 15 minutes of cooling. Total cooking time is 20 minutes, and this recipe makes about 45. Ingredients one third of a cup of unsalted butter, melted. One tablespoon of olive oil. Six and three quarter cups of spinach, washed, trimmed, and torn. Three quarter cups of crumbled feta cheese. One quarter cup of ricotta or small curd cottage cheese. One egg beaten. One tablespoon of chopped fresh parsley. 
one tablespoon of chopped fresh basil, and six sheets of phyllo pastry. Step 1. Brush two baking sheets with a little melted butter. Step 2. Heat the oil in a skillet. Add the spinach and cook for two minutes, stirring constantly. Stir in the feta and ricotta until they become soft and coat the spinach. Season to taste with salt and freshly ground black pepper. Remove the pan from the heat and allow the mixture to cool slightly. Then stir in the egg, parsley, and basil. Set aside for 15 minutes to cool completely. Step 3. Prepare the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Following the method in the chef's techniques on page 549, lay the sheets of phyllo pastry to produce three stacks, each with two layers of phyllo pastry. 4. Cut each stack into three inch squares, discarding any leftover pastry. Put one teaspoon of filling in the center of each phyllo square, then gather up the corners over the filling. Gently pinch the pastry, just above the filling, to seal without splitting. Step 5. Place the packages on the baking sheets and drizzle with some of the remaining melted butter. Bake for 15 minutes or until crisp and golden. Chef's tip. If you are using cottage cheese instead of ricotta, it will not be as smooth, so drain the cottage cheese thoroughly and press through a strainer before using. Smoked Salmon Pancake Rolls One of the attractive features of this recipe which successfully combines the flavors of smoked salmon and horseradish, is that the pancakes may be prepared in advance and frozen. Preparation time is one hour and 15 minutes of resting and one hour of refrigeration. Total cooking time is 10 minutes, and this recipe should make 30 to 35. Ingredients for the Chinese pancakes one cup of all-purpose flour, and two teaspoons of sesame oil. Other ingredients are five ounces of cream cheese at room temperature, one tablespoon of prepared horseradish, half a teaspoon of lemon juice, six ounces of smoked salmon slices, chopped fresh chives or herbs to garnish. Step 1. To make the Chinese pancakes, bring one-third of a cup of water to boil, and then follow the method in the chef's technique on page 537. Step 2. Stack the pancakes on a plate and keep them wrapped in a slightly damped cloth to prevent them from drying out. Step 3. Soften the cream cheese in a small bowl and mix with the horseradish and lemon juice until smooth. Step 4. Place the pancake on a work surface and trim off the upper third of the circle. Spread with a thin layer of cream cheese, then cover with a layer of salmon. Roll up as tightly as possible. Wrap in plastic wrap to keep it from unrolling, and set aside. Repeat with the remaining pancakes. Refrigerate for at least one hour. Step 5. Just before serving, trim the ends of each roll, then slice into 5 8 inch pieces, and pierce with a cocktail pick. Scatter a few chives or fresh herbs in the center of each roll and arrange on a platter and serve. Chef's tip. The pancakes can be prepared in advance and frozen. Briefly steam to soften before using.
spiced shrimp balls. The fried sesame seeds enclosing the tasty shrimp mixture will give a strong, distinctive flavor and a lovely golden brown color to these delicious, savory snacks. Preparation time is about 15 minutes and 20 minutes of chilling. Total cooking time is 15 minutes, and this should make 24. Ingredients 1 and a half pound of large uncooked shrimp 1 tablespoon of oil 2 cloves of garlic, crushed Half an inch piece of fresh ginger, finely chopped A quarter teaspoon of salt 2 teaspoons of sugar 1 teaspoon of chopped fresh cilantro 1 teaspoon of cornstarch half an egg white, and two-thirds of a cup of sesame seeds, as well as oil for deep frying. Step 1. Remove the shells from the shrimp and devein following the method in the chef's techniques on page 522. Pat dry with paper towels. Step 2. Put the shrimp in a food processor and process to a coarse puree. Transfer to a bowl and add the oil, garlic, ginger, salt, sugar, cilantro, and cornstarch, and mix well to combine. Step 3. Whisk the egg white until it just forms soft peaks. Then add just enough of the egg white to the spiced shrimp mixture to obtain a smooth, stiff mixture that will hold the shape. 4. Divide the mixture into 24 even-sized balls. Roll in the sesame seeds to coat, set them on a baking sheet, and chill in the refrigerator for 20 minutes. 5. Heat the oil in a deep fat fryer or deep saucepan. See Chef's Techniques, page 537. Deep fry the balls in three batches for four to five minutes, or until they are golden brown and crispy on the outside and cooked through. Drain on crumpled paper towels. Arrange them on a serving platter and serve hot. Satay beef sticks. Widely cooked throughout Southeast Asia, a satay consists of marinated meat, fish, or poultry, threaded onto bamboo or wooden skewers, broiled or barbecued, and served with a sauce. Preparation time is 35 minutes and 2 to 3 hours of marinating. Total cooking time is 15 minutes, and this should make 20. Ingredients are 1 quarter teaspoon of ground anise, a quarter teaspoon of ground cumin, 1 teaspoon of ground turmeric, 1 teaspoon of ground coriander, 1 shallot chopped, 1 clove of garlic finely chopped, a half inch piece of fresh ginger finely chopped, 1 stalk of lemongrass, white part only, finely chopped, one tablespoon of brown sugar, two tablespoons of peanut oil, one teaspoon of soy sauce, and six ounces of beef tenderloin cut into twenty thin strips. For the satay sauce, one clove of garlic, a third of a cup of smooth peanut butter, three tablespoons of coconut milk, a few drops of Tabasco sauce, or to taste. Two teaspoons of honey. Two teaspoons of lemon juice. And two teaspoons of light soy sauce. Step 1. Soak 20 short wooden skewers in water for one hour to prevent them from burning under the broiler. To make the marinade, add the ground anise, cumin, turmeric, 
and coriander to the shallot, ginger, garlic, lemongrass, and brown sugar in a medium bowl. Mix well and add the oil and soy sauce. Step 2. Thread a strip of beef onto each wooden skewer, weaving the skewers throughout the meat, and placing the satay sticks in a shallow dish. Thoroughly coat in the marinade and leave in the refrigerator for two to three hours. Step 3. To make the satay sauce, put the garlic into a small saucepan and cover with cold water. Bring to a boil and simmer for three minutes. Refresh under cold water, then drain and finely chop. Combine the garlic with the peanut butter, coconut milk, and a quarter cup of water in a medium saucepan. Stir over medium heat for one to two minutes, or until smooth and thick. Then add the Tabasco, honey, lemon juice, and soy sauce. Stir until the soy sauce is warm and thoroughly blended. If the mixture starts to separate, stir in one to teaspoons of water. Cover with plastic wrap and place in the refrigerator until ready to use. Step 4. Preheat a broiler or barbecue until hot. Cook the satay sticks for one to two minutes on each side turning three or four times during cooking. Once they are cooked, arrange on a plate and serve with a satay sauce. Marinated fish and tapenade on toast. Tapenade, a simple spread from Provence in France, is made by pureeing black olives, anchovies, capers, olive oil, and lemon juice, pictured on the bottom right. Preparation time should be about 10 minutes and 15 minutes of marinating. Total cooking time is 10 minutes, and this should make 16. Ingredients. Two filet, or 6 ounces total, of sea bass or other firm, lean white fish skin and bones removed, one clove of garlic, two tablespoons of olive oil, four slices of bread, crusts removed, a third of a cup of tapenade, 16 pink peppercorns, 16 sprigs of fresh dill, and small wedges of lemon to garnish. Step 1. Preheat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Cut each fish fillet into eight pieces. Place the garlic clove in the olive oil. Toss into the fish and allow to marinate for 15 minutes. Step 2. Toast the bread and spread with a thin layer of tapenade. Cut each slice diagonally into four triangles and arrange on a baking sheet. Place the marinated fish on the prepared toasts, and just before serving, place in the oven for two to three minutes, or until the fish is just cooked. It will flake when lightly pressed with a fork. Step 3. Remove from the oven and transfer to a serving tray. Place a small dot of the tapenade on the top, then a pink peppercorn in the center. Decorate each one with a sprig of dill and a lemon wedge. Chef's tip. As well as sea bass, red mullet goes particularly well with this recipe, but can be difficult to obtain. Check with your local fish merchant for availability. Tapenade is available at the Gourmet Delicatessen, or you can use the quick and simple recipe on page 52. Parma ham and melon fingers. An extremely refreshing, all-time favorite that is best made with paper-thin slices of parma ham or prosciutto, pictured in the top right. 
Preparation time is 10 minutes. Total cooking time is none, and makes 32. Ingredients are one small cantaloupe and 11 slices of parma ham or prosciutto. Step 1. Cut the melon in half lengthwise, and using a spoon, remove the seeds and gently scrape clean. Slice each half into eight wedges. Step 2. With a sharp knife, starting at one end of a melon wedge, slice between the flesh and the thick rind of the melon. Cut each piece of peeled melon in half. Step 3. Cut each slice of parma ham or prosciutto into three long strips. Step 4. Wrap a strip of parma ham or prosciutto around each wedge of melon and secure it with a cocktail pick. Shrimp Boucher Boucher are small round shells of puff pastry with a tasty filling. These were fashionable at the French court of Louis XV and his wife, who was renowned for her hearty appetite. Preparation time is 15 minutes and 35 minutes of chilling. Total cooking time is 20 minutes, and this should make 8. Half a quantity of puff pastry, see page 542, and one egg beaten. Ingredients for the filling. Two tablespoons of unsalted butter. A quarter cup of all-purpose flour. One cup of fish or shellfish stock or milk. A half pound of cooked shrimp. Shells removed. See page 522 and two tablespoons of chopped mixed fresh herbs. Step 1. Brush a large baking sheet with butter and refrigerate until needed. Roll out the pastry on a lightly floured surface to a quarter inch thickness. Brush off any excess flour from the surface and cut out eight rounds with a two and three quarter inch fluted biscuit cutter. Sprinkle the prepared sheet with a little cold water. Turn the rounds over and place on the sheet. Brush with the egg and chill for five minutes, then brush again. Using a floured two-inch plain biscuit cutter, press into the pastry three-quarters of the way through to mark an inner circle. Chill for 30 minutes. Step 2. Preheat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Brush the top of each pastry round again with beaten egg. Bake on the middle shelf of the oven for 10 to 12 minutes, or until the pastry rounds are well risen, crisp, and golden. Remove from the oven and cut around the center circle to remove the lid while still warm. Scrape out the excess soft pastry from the inside little shells. If you wish, return to the oven for 30 seconds to dry. You can turn off the oven and use the residual heat to do this. Step 3. To make the filling, melt the butter in a saucepan and add the flour and cook over low heat for one minute. Remove from the heat and pour in the stock or milk. Blend thoroughly with a wooden spoon and return to the stove. Stir constantly over low heat until the sauce is free of lumps. Increase the heat and stir until the mixture boils, then simmer for two to three minutes. Just before serving, stir in the shrimp to warm through. Finally, add the herbs and season to taste with salt and freshly ground pepper. Step 4. Spoon the filling into the pastry shells while both are still warm. If you wish, garnish with chopped herbs or extra shrimp. You may replace the lid, or not. Chef's tip. If using frozen cooked shrimp, they must be well thawed and drained before use. Do not wash them or thaw them in cold water, as they will lose a lot of flavor. After cutting out the pastry rounds, they are turned over on the baking sheet to help them rise with straight sides. If 
the cooked shells are left to cool, reheat in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for five minutes before serving and then fill with the hot filling. Leek Tartlets These small tartlets filled with leek and cumin are ideal served warm with drinks. Alternatively, they could be made as larger tarts and served as a first course. Preparation time is about 45 minutes and 15 minutes of chilling. Total cooking time is 40 minutes, and this recipe should make 30. For the filling, you'll need 3 tablespoons of unsalted butter, 1 large leek, white part only, thinly sliced, 1 bay leaf, a pinch of dried thyme, a pinch of salt, a quarter teaspoon of ground cumin, two-thirds of a cup of whipping cream, one egg, one egg yolk, and one quantity of short pastry. See page 544. Step 1. To make the filling, melt the butter in a saucepan over low heat. Add the leek, bay leaf, thyme, and salt. Cover and cook slowly for five minutes. Then uncover and continue cooking for 5 to 10 minutes, or until the mixture is dry. Remove the bay leaf. Add the cumin, mix well, and set aside to cool. Step 2. Grease 30 mini muffin cups. Roll out the short pastry on a lightly floured surface to a thickness of 1 8 of an inch and refrigerate for 5 minutes. Preheat the oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Step 3. Using a 2 and 3 quarter inch biscuit cutter, cut out 30 rounds from the pastry. Press the rounds into the prepared muffin cups, pressing down on the bottom so that the dough extends slightly above the edge of the cups. Refrigerate the lined cups for 10 minutes. Step 4. Whisk together the cream eggs and egg yolk, and season with salt and freshly ground black pepper. Fill each pastry shell with half a teaspoon of the leek mixture, then carefully pour in the cream mixture. Bake for 10 to 15 minutes or until the filling is set. Remove the tartlets from the cup while they are still warm. If they stick, loosen the tartlets carefully with the tip of a small, sharp knife. 